Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I've been having some serious crazy issues with this Evo 10 recently. Or not recently, it was as of yesterday. Ooh. So yesterday I was in my Evo 10. I was with my girlfriend Bobby. We were doing some polls. We were just messing around, going for a nice Sunday drive. And I noticed my car was only building like 19 or 20 PSI. This seems slow too. Oh, I saw that's how I looked at my boost gauge. 19 PSI, I will let it cool down for a second. One other thing I've noticed with this car recently, or as of yesterday, is when the car's warm and it's idling, it's sitting there constantly popping and backfiring on idle. So something serious is going on with the car, or it could be simple, it could be serious. I'm not exactly sure what it is. That is it. That is why I have the car in the shop right now, is I'm gonna kind of go through and diagnose it, try to figure out what is going on. I do know that if an exhaust valve is burnt or bent or something is wrong with the exhaust valve, it will cause the car to pop and like backfire at idle just sitting there. It's never done that before, so that certainly has me concerned. I hope it's nothing major inside my motor. Hopefully I don't have to tear the motor out of the car or try it apart whatsoever, but I guess we are gonna figure that out today. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just do, do a compression test on the motor. It's very simple to do on Evo 10. It'll probably take me like 10 minutes max to get a compression test done. And that's gonna tell me exactly if it's something internally or like inside the motor, or if it's something like a, like a boost leak somewhere or something else is going on. So that is what I'm gonna do today. The compression tester I will be using is a Craftsman. I'll have it linked it down in the description box below. So yeah, let's get started guys. I'm pretty sure this motor is supposed to be around 130 PSI across all four cylinders. So if it's lower than that, substantially on one cylinder, we all know it's something internal. So for those of you that have never seen a compression tester before, basically all it is, it's a long hose connected to like a little gauge. You're gonna screw this into the cylinder hole or the spark plug hole, screw it in nice and tight, go in the car, turn the motor over. I usually go about five revolutions with the gas pedal fully compressed, so the gas pedal all the way down, and then you're gonna come out, see how many PSI it reads on this gauge here. So like I said earlier, I think around 125, maybe 130, 130 PSI is what we should be looking for on this gauge. So it looks like cylinder one is right around 125 ish PSA, I would say. Cylinder two is the exact same. All right, I think I found an issue, guys. <sighs> cylinder three, put the compression tester in, and we are right at about, looks like 80 PSI, if you guys can see that, 80 PSI on this compression tester. So clearly there's a problem in my motor somewhere. Um, a compression tester kind of just tells you how much, obviously how much PSI the motor is building so basically that tells me one of two things number one it could be something in the bottom end like a piston or a bent rod it could be one of those obviously it's not a broken rod because the motor still runs perfectly fine number two it could be a valve like kind of like i was thinking earlier it could certainly be an exhaust or intake valve if you guys want to narrow it down from there i'll kind of just i'll i might as well do it with you guys i already know it's something internal so i was not going to leak down test the motor but this will kind of pinpoint exactly if it's something in the bottom end or in the head. I wasn't gonna do this originally just because I'm pulling the head off no matter what. I have a strong feeling it's something in the head, like a valve, but let's go ahead and do a leak down test on the motor now. So basically what a leak down test is, instead of seeing how much compression or pressure that specific cylinder builds on the motor, you're gonna be putting pressure back into the motor and seeing how well it holds the pressure, if that makes sense. So instead of pressure coming out of the motor, you're putting pressure in. And how this allows you to pinpoint exactly what is going on inside your motor, you'll either hear air coming from your intake, so your air filter, your exhaust, so at the back of the car, or number three, it could be coming from your crankcase, your oil filter tube, you'll hear air coming out of there or either your dipstick. So let's go ahead and get this hooked up real quick. If you guys want to pick one of these guys up, super, super handy to have. If I was to pick one of the two, a compression tester or a leak down, I'd definitely get a compression tester first. But if you guys already have a compression tester and you want to add another tool to your garage, definitely pick up a leak down tester. I'll have one of these linked down in the description box below as well for you guys. So instead of having one gauge like the compression tester does, this has two gauges on it. 
Basically, if you want to actually properly leak, properly leak down test your motor, you would hook this up to the air compressor and air hose and turn this dial right here till it reads 0% leakage on the second gauge. But being that I know that this thing's gonna leak somewhere, I don't really care about the actual percentage. It's probably gonna be 100%. So I'm just gonna hook this up to the motor, hook it up to the air and slowly turn this dial until air starts coming out and into the cylinder walls and we can see exactly where that air is going. Before you leak down test the motor, you do need to make sure that cylinder is at top dead center. And the easy way to do that without pulling anything apart is grab a very, very long screwdriver and gently put it down into that spark plug hole. You're gonna turn the motor, you can reach down, down there or pull the wheel off and the crank access cover and turn the crank pulley over. And when that screwdriver comes to the very top, right before it starts to go back down, it'll mean cylinder three is at the very top of its stroke, meaning both valves will be closed and we can see exactly what is going on. All right, so I got everything hooked up. Right off the bat, I can hear air coming through the intake. You guys hear that? I don't really hear much of anything coming out the exhaust. So basically, basically what that tells us is somehow our intake valve either got bent or burnt. So that definitely does suck that something is going on internally with my motor, but being that it's in the head and not the and not the bottom end, meaning like the piston or the rods, being that it's the valves, it should be not an easy fix. It could definitely be worse though. That's the thing. It could definitely be worse. It could be a piston or it could be a rod, which I don't think I'll ever have problems with this, my bottom end setup, because I do have manly I-beam rods and CP pistons, which are both very, very good. My head is all stock. I had it gone through when I built this motor about a year and a half ago. I don't know how many miles ago that was, but it could definitely be worse, so I'm happy that it's something on the top end. I don't know when I'm gonna get around to tearing this thing apart. That sucks, honestly. Now that I think about it, that does, that does really suck. I try to be like all positive and everything, but yeah, that freaking sucks, guys. Oh man, um, I don't have to pull the motor out of the car. I have my ETS T3 turbo kit kit on there, so that will be much easier to remove versus a stock setup. And then the intake manifold and all that will have to come off as well. I just hope I can get the head off the motor inside the car because I do have ARP head studs. I don't know if that's gonna cause any like binding issues trying to get the head up off there. I know there's gonna be a lot of people in the comment section below wondering why this would happen. Honestly, I don't know exactly what's going on yet. So I guess we can see some more details when I pull this car apart or the motor or pull the head off, I guess. We can see if it bent a valve, which I don't think it did because it's not making any noise. I think either the valve seat got burnt on the head or the valve itself got burnt. That's kind of what I'm guessing. I am going to go ahead and pull the valve cover on this motor real quick to see if there's anything going on under there. Maybe it's something with one of my cams, maybe my valve buckets. Um, it could be anything up there as well. So I'm going to pull this valve cover off real quick and let's hope it's something under there and nothing deeper than that. That'd be super, super nice. So as you can see, we got the valve cover off. I'm not noticing anything weird under the valve cover whatsoever. I checked all the valve clearances, all those are in check. So that means it's definitely something deeper. Very, very unfortunate that the Evo's down, but you know what? That's the race car life. She's gonna come back better than ever before. Well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw the valve cover back on, just bolt it up a little bit so I make sure I don't get anything, any dirt or any random stuff inside the motor. I don't know when I'm gonna have time to turn, tear into this thing and figure out exactly what is going on, but we have plenty of other projects to work on right now anyway. This thing may be sitting back here in the shop for a while. All right, my dudes, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video right here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. For all my mechan mechanically inclined homies, go down in the comment section below and drop a comment and let me know what you think, what we're gonna find when we pull this head off. I don't know when that's gonna happen, but go drop a comment in the comment section below and let me know. Peace out, I hope you guys enjoyed the upload. If you did, go down below, smash that thumbs up button. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.